This your boy Joe Fontaine or Joe Fontaine Music. And right about now we're chilling on Machine. Uh, this is version uh, 1.6 which has a studio in integration where it does all, uh, it has a process in it where it actually can host plugins. But anyway, I had to email someone who was asking me how to actually get the, uh, the plugins inside of Machine because they just got the, uh, the 1.6 update. And the way that you do that is basically what you would do is you would go under here under file. You would go on up under uh, to audio. I'm sorry, not audio and MIDI, but um, to your preferences settings. And when you go into your preference settings, you're going to see this preference box come up. You have in, the, in this general tab uh, defaults, you have user path, you have libraries, plugins, as well as hardware. So what you want to do is you want to select plugins. And you can see right here I have my program files where it's in VST plugins. That's under your manager. Um, so what you would do, wherever you have your plugins in your in your computer, you would put that right here. And once you select that, you you hit uh, scan or rescan, and it's going to um, access all those plugins. It's going to bring them into the machine. Now, you don't have to have it scan on each search. Like once you have those plugins loaded up, what you want to do is go over here under your manager. You click on that, and you can see like right here where it has all of my plugins, they're all stored in there. They're all selected. Okay. But where it says scan at startup, it's going to be checked like that. Just uncheck that. That way, machine doesn't have to reread those plugins each and every time. So it makes your machine load a lot faster. You don't have to sit there and wait for all of that to, uh, you know, reload and all that. Okay. So once you do that, you get your plugins actually scanned into machine. From there, what you do next, you have these two tabs. Uh, you can store up to two effects inside machine on um, on each tab so for example when, if I um, select this second tab then go over here up under this little icon here these are the built-in plugins that come with machine those are free um, when you scroll down here to where it says plugins right here this is where you're going to notice all your plugins I'll just scroll through them you can see that they're all loaded in there because it accessed that folder and it brought them in internally and also um, auto maps them externally to your um, your machine controller and I'll get to the controller in a minute once you load a plugin you'll see right here these are the mappings and right here if you click on this icon here it br actually brings your plugins up like this so for example you can see right here the, the linear phase EQ or if I jump on this other tab over here you can see it right here again it's mapping it out so you can do it externally, I mean rather internally with your mouse or you can jump over to your hardware controller and these same icons, they're going to look a little bit different but they're going to be into your machine control and you can access them. And then again if you click over here, it's going to show the plugin. Whereas on your, um, the machine controller is going to have, it'll have the name of it on the machine controller. Over here you'll notice that I have, you know, these are some of my, my drum sounds. Um, for those who don't know, I'll just scroll over here right quick. I'll jump in my group A. You can see right here, these are some of my drum sounds that I have loaded in that I'm actually playing. I have some, some kits that I made. I'm also using some kits off the Internet. Some kits are processed very well, so that can compromise your mix. A lot of times when you're EQing your, uh, your drums, try to get the, the cleanest, driest kick that you can. Roll off as much as high as you can. Same when you're doing the snares, roll off as much bass. Depends on how you want to mix it. I like to mix different kicks and snares together to get a more fuller sound. Also like to um, adjust the headroom mics uh, on snares and stuff like that in case I want to have a little high end on the snare as well as a little low end on the snare. You can do the same effect. And also, uh, what I did notice also, let me get I go ahead and get this uh, contact player out the way here. If you're wondering how to get your MIDI set up, if you're hitting on your uh, your keyboard and your keyboard is actually not triggering off, that's because you have to go over here under File. You have to go under Audio and MIDI Settings. You can sync to an external MIDI clock if need be or send a MIDI clock if you need to also. Um, you also have access to uh, your recent files. You can export audio uh, in case you want to import it into a, um, a host DAW. But anyway, back to the MIDI. If you, if you click here where it says Audio and MIDI Settings, when you click on that, uh, it's going to bring up your Audio and MIDI Settings. <clears throat> now you see here how I have mine set up on, I'm using the M Audio. USB um, on this computer anyway. Uh, the sample rate you can adjust here if you need it to go higher. 
On this particular uh, sound card, the highest uh, bit depth is going is 48,000 kz, um, which is a which is a 24 bit, which is good. It's you know, and I have the latency set about about 215. It's saying 256 samples, uh, just to reduce the delay. So to get that set up, you want to go over here where it says MIDI. You'll notice just how your MIDI controller for the uh, for machine has to be on. So does your your keyboard. So right here, I have the Axiom 61. So if you notice right here, it's an Axiom 61 MIDI N. That has to be on. If that's not on, when you're hitting on your keys, you're not going to get no sound to come out of it. You know your outputs. Make sure that this, you know, if you have, I'm not sure how on some computers it is, but mine has this wave, waveable synth. Make sure that's off. You're going to get like a lot of echo. And, uh, you know, if you don't have the MIDI out, if you're not MIDIing anything out, I'm, I'm doing this particular application, just make sure you turn all these off. It'll save your, your CPU a lot of power. Um, you know, and I don't, I don't have anything MIDI'd in right now. I'm using all just internally with the machine with my MIDI controller, which is so cool about machine. And you can route it. You have up to, let's see, I think 16 outs. Yeah, you have up to 16 outs. You, you can see right here, I don't have none of these outs right here connected. But if I did, if need be, I would just go in there and just adjust what I need to adjust. Um, right now, I'm just using my, my analog outs. And uh, I'll probably just take this and go ahead and dump it inside Pro Tools. So that, that's pretty much how you get the, uh, the MIDI going. All right, and I'm back with the machine controller right here. Now, as you can see uh, on now, these screens let's say here. we want to go ahead and we want to get back to mapping out our plugins. So what you want to do is you want to click over here. Well, the button's not lit up up there, but it doesn't matter. Just click it anyway where it says sound. Okay, now you notice that these guys jump up. And those are actually the, the plugins settings. We can now control those. So if you look right here, see where it says core? It says core player. And over there it says Len EQ. That's the phaser. I mean, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Lenny Q from Waves, and right there is the, uh, the VCOM. And it's auto mapping those plugins. So, like, even though these buttons are not lit up up here, you still click on them because you go into the tabs. Like, I click this tab, now I'm on a Lenny Q. See how that changed? And same thing, this button here, when I click this, see how it's going through it? It's going through all the, the bands. See? It's going through all the bands. And keep going backwards, backwards, forwards. How you want to do it? You'll know because when you're at the end, the light goes off. See, the light goes off. Let's say if I jump over here to the to the to the V comp, same thing. There, it's showing the attack. You know, and then you use the knobs down here. You know, if you want to control the attack. You know, the release. Let's see here. We got the analog. That's going to turn the analog light on and off from zero percent to one hundred percent. Uh, I'm using the Waves ones. Maybe I, I might do a, a tutorial. I might just start using some free plugins. So then you guys, you know, that way you don't have to use the more expensive plugins. I think that'd be a, be a better tutorial. I think I'm gonna do that on my next one. And again, you just jump through these tabs, boom, and that's how you can scroll through different effects, <clears throat> uh, mapping it out. Because anything I hit here, like let's say if I hit this, now you won't be able to see it here. But I'm just going to go over here to the screen. But I'm over here in the controller. But see, like, on the screen, there's nothing on the screen, right? But if I come back over here and I hit this button, let's say I say, oh, I want my my Waze uh, EQ to pop up. When I hit this button like that, boom, now it's there. See? Boom. Off, on, off, on. Now I jump back over here. Same thing, the V comp. I want, okay, let's say, hey, I'm in the mix. You know, I'm doing whatever, blah, 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 boom, boom, boom. Oh, I, want my, I need my V comp to come up. I hit this button. Boom. Comes up. Off and on. Same thing with the core player. Off and on. See? And they all stack up. You know, it holds, it holds the plugins, but look, they're all, all the windows are opening at the same time. So, thank you for calling Joe Fontaine. This, this is Joe Fontaine. How can I help you? Yeah, I have instrumentals and drum kits available. Yeah. Okay. I'm doing a video right now, so let me call you back in like one minute. All right. Sorry about that, customer. <laughs> Calling about drum kits and stuff like that. Okay, but that that's basically how you can pull up the, um, you know, your plugins and things of that nature. Thing, and again, same thing with, with the master fader. You can control 
your groups all at once and, and things like that. You can get to the outs, the source outs, and control actually the overall level right here. Okay. You also have down here, you notice that you have pad mode and also the pattern button. I'll review these ones right quick. You click on the pattern button, you look up here, see the bars, the length. That's how you control the length of your bar, the lengths of your bars. Right here is going to show your patterns. You can duplicate those patterns by hitting the duplicate button here. Now you also have pad mode. The cool thing about pad mode, let's say if I have an instrument selected on the pad, on the sound or whatever, okay, if you just tap this pad, it's only going to play uh, the sounds going up octaves like that. Um, I find it better to you hit this switch like this. Um, it's going to be hard for me because I got to jump over here like this. I like to get on the uh, the keyboard where it says, it says it says keyboard right there. You click that, and then that way when you jump on your your controller over here, now the sounds are spread all across your MIDI controller. This right here is Axiom Axiom 61. For example, it'll be like. <coughs> saying it's all on there. So it's all on there. So that makes getting busy really easy. You can hit pad mode you can hit pad mode again. You can take the keyboard off like that. There's the sound right there. Okay. And not just that, I mean it maps everything like I'm it's just it's hard for me to do because I just got one hand, but like let's say if I was hitting this key that nasty sound and synth right there. Over here, your modulation, all that works, see? Probably hard to see. My pitch bend. All that, all that's mapping out. With them. And then... All that's mapping out. The octaves, every I mean every everything on your on your MIDI controller that you're mapping out um, works on machine. So that is a, a definite plus. And also on, on your keyboard, again, when you pad your pad mode, uh, when you are in keyboard mode, if you don't have a MIDI controller, don't worry, you still can So you can get busy on here as well. So machine, very versatile program. I highly, highly recommend it. Unless you really want a custom tuned sound, you know, like what I do when I make my drum kits, I sell my drum kits for 10 bucks. I'll take some of my Akai sounds or maybe even some some machine stock sounds, and I'll tweak them out. I'll put some plugins on them to make the bass heavy. I'll I'll combo double up kicks and snares, adjust the headroom mics to add a little more low on the snare with a little more high end on the snare, making kicks that are really thumping. So, because there's some people out there who don't have plugins to get that sound, who need that sound, you know, that's why I say you can get a drum kit from me. You can get that high quality sound without having expensive plugins. So anyway, that that's pretty much it. On, on this segment here, just showing what the machine controller can actually do, mapping the plugins. Uh, it also has a sample function right here. When you hit now, sample. you can see that the the mic is moving right there, so you can sample your voice. Um, I also know a trick where you can actually, I know a way you can sample inside a machine without even needing a turntable or an eternal program. Uh, just PM me and I'll tell you how to do it. You actually can make machine sample without having to buy anything. It's a little trick I found and it works so just get at me and I'll tell you how to do that. But anyway, this is your boy Joe Fontaine so I'm going to close this, this section right here and we will... I mean, it's a bit. So this is your boy Joe Fontaine, Joe Fontaine music. So get at me.